Hi folks, let's take this 3D printed knife handle and let's model it in Fusion 360 using a pretty cool trick. Welcome to another Fusion Friday. How do we do this? As an entrepreneur, I need to be able to build stuff and experiment and prototype, and my belief is fail fast and fail cheap. So if I need to get a 3D model of this made pretty quickly, and I don't have the 3D model, I've only got the part, take a quick picture of it, create a new component, call it knife handle, insert attached Canvas, terrible name, great feature. What face are we going to put it on? I'll pick between the green and the red, which is the XY plane. Click here on the mountain to pick my image. Knife handle. And for now, we're just gonna click OK. So one of the things I like about this is it's not the pet perfect picture. I didn't take my time to set up really, really good lighting it does help to have high contrast and obviously to be aligned overhead from it. Next, we grab our trusty dial calipers and pick two points. I'm gonna pick the outside most points. It's just the easiest measurement to grab. And I get 3.52. Expand the knife handle, expand canvases, right click and choose calibrate. Pick the leftmost point representing where the calipers would have touched, and pick the sidemost point over here as well. 3.52. We did this way back when, fitting a, a magwell into a stock, and we got within four thousandths of an inch. Pretty cool, right? C for circle. What plane do we want to sketch on? This plane right here. We're going to start sketching. So my rule of thumb when I reverse engineer things is I tend not to worry too much about the hole locations precisely if I can recreate the whole stack of holes. In other words, if I'm off a little one way or the other from the part, it doesn't always matter since in this case, we would be in theory creating everything else around it. Kind of center over here. You'll see you do get a lot of perspective distortion from that angle. The through holes are about 187, 316. So different dimension. 0.175, here we'll say equal, and I'll click this one and that one. Let's move it over about there. Now those two, I want to stay in that location. I'm gonna click on the white dot, hold down control key, click on the next white dot, and I'm now gonna click fix. It will turn them green and I can no longer move them. To sketch the outside of this, S for keyboard shortcut, ARC for arc, three point arc. Pick a point and I try to look for kind of change in direction. So we'll see if we can get one from here to here that matches one, two, three. There we go. My screen recording software doesn't seem to like uh, doing this all at once. So that looks good. Now we've got a little bit of a problem here I can tell. So I'm actually just gonna start a arc from here come back, there we go, something like that. I don't like that corner, we'll come back to it. Click there, might be able to get all the way through here, maybe not. No, it's a different radius. See that, it, it looks great and then it doesn't work so here. So you can either try to drag this back, which worked here, or you can just delete that arc and start over. I'm actually going to move it back to this point here. Right click, hold down and swipe up, repeats the same motion. So in other words, it lets you do a new three-point arc. Click on that arc. Click on here in the end. So yeah, there's the prop. We need to, we're not going to be able to do that last little tail part. So see how it moved the first one? Let's say I didn't want to do that. If I like this first one, again, I'm gonna click on it once, hit fix. Now when I create my second arc, I can't, it won't accidentally move that one. Like so, and keep going away all around here. 
The fewer the arcs, the better. And I am no industrial designer, but one trick is keep your arcs tangent to each other. It makes the part look a lot better most of the time. So what do I mean by that? If I click, I'll hide my canvas real quick. If I click tangent, if I keep this arc tangent to that arc, very subtle change, but helps a lot. That's a problem. If you keep it tangent, you keep a sweeping motion. Now it can be really difficult to keep the uh, parts matching or it can go haywire like you just, just saw it did right there. See that? That's no good, obviously. So that's one reason why it can really help to lock down certain segments that you think are in a really good place. See that? It's moving that around. So let's undo some of that. Okay. I'll keep the uh, thing on. So I don't like that. There we go. That's the problem. That's just not going to work. So I'll just lock that one down without it being tangent. Now I'll create, see if I can create a tangency between these two. There we go. Look at that. It's actually pretty nice. And it's a trade-off. Are we trying to match this design perfectly or are we just trying to get our own design that has a good flow to it? Last S A R C between there and there. Pretty good. Maybe pull that point up just a hair. Pull it out a little. I kind of call this freeform design. You can hit D for dimension and click on an arc and actually set an actual radius. Interesting, maybe that is a 13 inch radius. Regardless, pretty darn close. We've got some cleanup to do though. First, let's extrude it. E for extrude, click on it, 0.25. Let's fill it at S, F, I, L. Choose the 3D or solid model fillet. Walk around the edges. And we'll say 0.1 inches. Click OK. Now, the question is do you want to do corner fillets or edge fillets first? Let's try that. We can actually keep this fillet, I think, rewind our timeline and do again S, F, I, L. And say we want to put some fillets on the sharper corners here. Something like that, click OK. And we can then fast forward to the end. One last thing I wanna show you that's kinda of cool. We need to counterbore these two holes. If you look at the original part, there are a couple counterbores. We can do that all on one sketch, which I think is a really elegant way to do it. Right click on your original sketch one, edit sketch, C for circle. Let's say they're quarter inch. Do the second one and make it equal to the first one. Stop sketch. So now the problem is that that counterbore extends from this top face down about 62 thou. The sketch is on the wrong plane. E for extrude. I'll click the first counterbore and the second one. Now change your start from the profile plane, and let's change it to from object. Now we're able to click this top plane, and now, see how the arrow's pointed up? That means if I type a negative, it's gonna cut, negative 0 0.0625. And now, we've been able to keep everything on one sketch plane, keeps things cleaner, it means you have to do less projections, you can see your dimensions and relative sizes all on one plane, and we've been able to extrude from multiple surfaces. Folks, hope you've learned, hope you've enjoyed. I'd love to hear from folks that are designers, knife makers and industrial designers. I'm sure there are better ways we could do this CAD, whether it's like we did the video on splines uh, or just general shapes. But I gotta say, it looks pretty good. Folks, take care, see you soon.